Hello everybody, here is Thomas Stünke, founder of commissioningcoach.com, a commissioning manager and a commissioning engineer. Welcome to part 4 of my 10 parts video mini training course for commissioning newbies. I hope you already enjoyed part 1, 2 and 3. In this fourth course I want to explain more about the third key element PNID checking. You will learn how to prepare and how to perform a PNID check. As always, I'm using the mind map format for my presentation because it's easier to remember. And of course, you can download as well this mind map in HD quality from my download section on www.commissioningcoach.com. So, Let's start with a detailed explanation of key element number three, PNID checking. The nine key elements of successful plant commissioning. Element three, PNID checking. PNID checking. You can say as well system check. System check for construction and engineering errors. Plant inspection or punching. All these words are synonyms for PNID checking. Who will execute the checks? Usually this is done by the commissioning team members, especially by commissioning engineers. Which items have to be checked? We have to check all the piping. Here is it very important to walk each and every single line. If you check small and simple equipment like small pumps and simple vessels, there is usually no need for a vendor's representative. But for large and complicated machines like boiler feed water pumps or turbines, it will be a good idea to invite the vendor on site and to perform all checks together with him. All the instrumentation has to be checked. Usually this will be done together with an instrumentation engineer. You as a commissioning engineer verify the basics like nameplate, flow direction, mounting position, temperature range and measurement range. When you perform the PNID check, you will do it from different points of view. The most important is safety. Is the installation safe? Can it be operated in a safe manner? Did the construction team a good job? Please observe the system from the point of view of an operator. Is it possible to operate this valve or do we need an additional platform? Write these findings down. The same is valid for maintenance works. Is there a hoist over this big motor and pump to remove it or do we have to build a complicated mechanism? It's a good idea to perform the following additional tasks like to attach temporary identification tags or to attach temporary signs for various lines, valves and equipment or to put on temporary signs for medium and flow direction. Why is this a good idea? Because this makes it easier to perform the future commissioning and startup activities. Which PNIDs should we use? The most important rule is to use the latest revision only. All PNIDs should be marked with the system boundaries. There are a few or sometimes even a lot more other documents you need to perform the PNID check like all different kinds of plans, equipment drawings, different type of checklists, engineering and vendor specifications, company national and international standards, 
hookup drawings and render documents for complicated equipment. When you perform the PNID check, you will for sure find one or more deviations from the PNID or other specifications. In such cases, you have to put this deviation into a punch list. If you are unsure of the quality of any item, please contact the lead unit process engineer to discuss it. Here is one important advice. Any punch item which changes any feature of the PIN ID must be screened by the lead unit process engineer from a design and safety point of view before implementation. The punch list should be transmitted to the construction, engineering and QA, QC department. I want to give you an example how to perform a PNID check. Please be aware that this method can change in different industries, but the basic rules apply. At first, define which color has which meaning. Mark checked items with a highlighter on the system PNIDs. 40 items get a check number. Write this check number on the PNID and enter this number with a description of the fault into the punch list. Make two copies of the marked system PNIDs and two copies of the system punch list. Attach each punch, punch list to its respective PNID. One copy is used as a work or recheck copy. The other copy is used as a commissioning team master copy and filed with the respective system files. The original punch list and marked up PNID is the system master punch list and is sent to and kept in the system punch list master files by QA QC department. Punch items should be signed off by the respective originating punch team or authority. Construction QA QC control management through their respective punch list coordinator takes care of execution, correction and signing off of the original system master punch list through the respective construction discipline punch list execution team. After correction of punch items, the respective construction punch list execution team will inform the respective originating punch team or authority that the work is completed and will do a combined recheck for immediate signing off of the original system punch list. So, last but not least, I want to let you know an important fact. A smooth startup of any industrial plant depends to a large degree on the thoroughness the unit is checked beforehand. I summarize the fourth lesson. We learned how to prepare and how to perform a PNID check. In lesson number five, I will speak about the fourth key element, pre-commissioning, in more detail. So, please sign up for my Commissioning Coach newsletter and I will keep you up to date about new training lessons. Thank you for watching and see you soon.